Hello everyone, Catholic Positive Energy, George here. Nice to see everyone. Now I'm sure a lot of you by now have seen <clears throat> last week's broadcast, our 100th broadcast. <clears throat> yeah, I'm feeling a lot better uh, right now, by the way. Anyways, uh, it was an amazing broadcast. I have, uh, I'm glad that at least because I went live during the day last week, I'm glad that I had uh, one of my super fans, one of my holy saints, I'll mention her again, Karen Kernoyer. I'm glad that she was able to join me live. And uh, for uh, afterwards, I've had some amazing comments by other people who are regularly here, like Jean Loga and Cheryl Mostacho. <coughs> Those are just the ones that uh, really stand out there because I always see them. They're always here commenting, liking everything that I post, reacting to everything, telling me how much they appreciate the fact that I'm here and that I have started this community for the sole purpose of bringing some positive energy into your lives from a Catholic perspective and from other ways I know as well, such as prayer and meditation, which is what we're going to do this week. And just some things I want to say before I start. Uh, just uh, yesterday, in the Facebook group, we have reached 500 members. <laughs> 500 members. Oh, yeah. That is just wonderful. I started this community over two years ago, and I always thought that it would take maybe several years for me to reach 100. And... I remember, and like I say, if I don't mention your name, please don't be offended. Like I say, I, if I see that certain people here are regularly participating and always commenting on the things that I post and reacting to the things that I post, then yes, I will mention your name because you're always here. And I love that. But I do love every single one of you. But like I say, if I regularly see you're here, then yes, I'm going to mention you. I, uh, Cheryl Mustacho. I remember when I, I actually met her because there's another group I manage for a dear friend of mine called Your Joyful Place, and I met her there, and I invited her to join my page here, my community, Catholic Positive Energy, and when I invited her, she started inviting more people and more people and more people, and then it grew, and I always said that <clears throat> once I reached 100 members here in the group, then I would start doing regular broadcasts like this. And because of wonderful people like her, I was able to achieve that goal. And that's why we've had these broadcasts here every week for over two years now. <clears throat> and now that we have 500, and I can't even believe it myself, I'll tell you, I, I think this, this community here, this is the first time I've ever started something that, that I did by myself, and then eventually, and I'm not taking all the credit, eventually it grew and more people were coming here like all of you, more people were coming, more people were liking the page in the group, more people were subscribing to the YouTube channel. By the way, I just looked just now, right before I came on, we have 32 YouTube subscribers. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I was in the 20s for a long time. Now I'm at 32 YouTube subscribers. I sure hope one day I'll get to a million. <clears throat> yeah, that'll probably happen in, I don't know, 20 years or so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I'm trying to be optimistic, seriously. I mean, I'm not going to sound like I'm being cocky and overconfident, like, oh, yeah, we're going to get to a million people. Well, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I really don't. I hope it does. I truly hope it does. But I'm not going to try to sound arrogant, cocky, and overconfident because, you know, those, those are not really good qualities as I've learned the hard way a long time ago. So uh, having mentioned all of these wonderful things now, um, and like I say, I'm coming to you this week on Monday instead of Tuesday because tomorrow <clears throat> I'm going to be visiting Catholic Answers down in the San Diego area in El Cajon, and uh, then I have my uh, bowling league tomorrow night. So 
I'm going to be out of the house pretty much the whole day tomorrow, and I'm not go going to be able to come here like this tomorrow, so that's why I'm here tonight. So uh, please forgive me for coming on a day early. I did announce it yesterday, and uh, I'm, hopefully most of you saw it. So <clears throat> this week is our prayer broadcast, because last week I talked about a topic, very wonderful topic. Now I'm uh, going to be praying the Memorari with all of you. You're, uh, now, for those of you who have been here with me for a while, you know about the Memorari. I, I don't have to tell you, this has gotten me through some very difficult times. This is a very powerful prayer. It really is. And I can't tell you how, how many, <clears throat> you know, negative messes I have been in praying this prayer, especially praying it ten times like we're going to right now has gotten me through the most difficult times of my life. I feel like I have to say this every time because, you know, I mean, we we might have new members who have never heard this story, and I feel that I I really want to emphasize the how powerful the Memorari is. Praying it ten times is a novena to Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it is a very powerful prayer. Now... For any of you watching, I'm open to hearing all of your thoughts, suggestions, comments. Hopefully they're positive comments. Like I always say, and I'm going to say it during the broadcast instead of at the very end, I always say dignification is better than criticism. Yeah, I'm saying it during the broadcast. Can you believe it? Yeah, you're probably like, all right, you don't need to say it at the end. <laughs> Anyways, like I say, I, I want to hear your thoughts and your feelings, but uh, hopefully I, it, they won't, what you post in the comments, I... Hope they're not going to be criticisms. Like I say, um, I, I find criticism, I mean, if it's used, if it's misused, criticisms are not very well received. And trust me, I have been on the receiving end of a lot of very terrible, negative, rude criticisms my whole life. And this is why I, I made that my catchphrase, because people who I grew up around were under the impression that Criticizing your uh, loved ones is a good thing. Oh, you need to be able to criticize your, your, your family. You should be able to take criticism. Well, whenever I criticize these very same people, they didn't like it. But they did it to me constantly. So, no, I don't feel that criticism is a good thing. I mean, it depends on how you use it. I'll throw one example since I'm just on this topic. Let's say you criticize someone. You think someone's not doing a good job at something. And this is someone you know very well, someone you're close to. Let's say you, you try to tell them, maybe not in the nicest way possible, you try to tell them you're criticizing them. You're trying to correct them. You're trying to tell them that if they keep doing this, that's wrong, that's bad, don't do that again. How many times have you said that to somebody? Or how many times has somebody said that to you? And then the person you said it to got angry with you or upset have you ever gotten angry or upset with somebody who criticized you a little too much or a little too harshly hopefully you're thinking now i certainly have yes I, I, like i said i've been on the receiving end of a lot of those my whole life a lot of bad memories there so like i say i'm open to hearing all of your uh positive thoughts feelings, any suggestions that you may have here to try to help us improve Catholic positive energy. So, on with the prayer. When I'm done with the prayer, we're going to have our meditation, and then I'm going to slide right over here, and I, I will be quiet for several moments, and we will have our meditation. You will hear the Chinese waterfall, and we will meditate. So, <clears throat> Uh, if anybody is watching this broadcast live, or maybe you're, you're, you're watching me after I've been live, and I'm not live anymore right now while you're watching, please feel free to put your prayer requests in the comments here if you're watching me on the Facebook page, or even if, if you may be watching me on the YouTube channel and you have prayer requests. Uh, you know, Let's say you, you comment on this YouTube video a year or two from now. I will see it. And uh, I will notice it, and yes, I will pray for you even if it's two years from now. <laughs> you ever notice that when you comment on somebody's YouTube video, or, or you see somebody who commented on a YouTube video that you really liked, and, uh, you know, the comment is from like a long time ago, 
it's not posted the moment that video was uploaded. <laughs> That's why I say that two years from now. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, feel free, or if you don't want to say what your prayer request is, please feel free to just say personal intentions or please pray for me. Uh, I One thing I want to encourage, and like I say, I, I have no problem. If you want to tell me what your prayer request involves, you're free to do that. I just want to say this. If you're going to post a prayer request praying for somebody who may be ill or not feeling well or maybe in the hospital, I just want to make this suggestion, and this has nothing to do with me. This is simply for the people who post these things. Uh, your personal life, I care about your personal life and your reputation. And if I have had people post things here, prayer requests, and like I say, I don't mind the people who've done this. Hear me out. If you post something like, please pray for my loved one who is in the hospital or someone who died, that's totally up to you if you want to do that, and it's totally fine by me if you want to keep doing that. But when, when you post things like this, other people read them, and other people will know what's going on in your life. And like I say, it's totally up to you if you want to do that. But if there are certain details about your personal life that maybe you want to keep hidden, or maybe... If you just want to tell me and not tell other people who may be watching, feel free to email me here and you can tell me in private and I won't divulge that on the broadcast. Just let me know that you want me to keep it between you and I and I will. I'll take it with a grave. I'll take it to me. I'll take it to the grave with me there. Three times the charm. Anyways, so yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you, you can do that, but I just want to protect your privacy, your reputation as well, because, you know, have you ever noticed if you read somebody's prayer intentions about those things I just mentioned, and then you start to think certain things, like I say, I, I'm, I just want to leave those options out there for you, and feel free to follow any one of those. <clears throat> Let's start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Praying the Memorari. Ten times. And I also want to pray for each and every one of you, and I want to ask all of you to please continue to pray for me. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, <clears throat> that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided, <clears throat> inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. <clears throat> Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me, amen. <clears throat> Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided, Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. <clears throat> Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that an anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, 
O virgin of virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Excuse me for just a moment. All this talking makes me thirsty. <clears throat> All right. Seven. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, <clears throat> O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided, Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. <clears throat> Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Number 10. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, please cast, help this powerful prayer reach wonderful, wonderful people out here. Amen. <clears throat> now, that concludes the prayer portion of this broadcast. Now, uh, to the meditation. So, here I'll try to just make sure that the, at least for, for the YouTube channel, I have to push this uh, Chinese waterfall a little bit more forward. Okay, I think that's good. All right. Now, I'm going to shift over here for just a few minutes. I'm going to be totally silent for a few minutes. We're going to have our meditation. Now, if you're watching, whether you're watching live or later, I recommend for this portion of the broadcast until I return here uh, to in front of the camera, please close your eyes. Please let your thoughts go. This is the part where we don't think about all the busy things happening in our lives. We don't think about the stress. We don't think about what's gonna happen tomorrow or next week or next month. This is where we relax. This is where we soak in all the positive energy and we throw away all the negative energy. So, hope you enjoy this and I will be right back.
I got to tell you, let me tell you about my experience during this meditation. I had my eyes closed. I'm sitting in this chair just right over there. And listening to the water here on the Chinese waterfall, I really felt positive energy coming in, negative energy going out. Like I say, I'm fully aware that in this world, even those of us who have, you know, pretty much like everything we want, there, there can be an overwhelmingly amount of negative energy out there in the world in our lives. And for people out there who may feel that their lives are overwhelmed with negative energy, this is why people like me are out here to, who exist to try to show you there can be an overwhelmingly amount of positive energy. And uh, uh, ha having say, said this, I just want to touch on just one more thing. I know, I, I, I like to talk a lot and share stories here, but like I say, this is why I'm here. And hopefully I'm not boring you to death, and this is why you're here, and this is why we've grown to 500 members in the group, about almost 400 who like the page, and 32 YouTube subscribers, so I'd like to think I'm not boring people too much. I certainly hope I'm not. But if I am, please let me know. Feel free to send me a message and let me know. And hopefully I can find a way to not make you feel that way. But I really don't think I am. Because I've never had anybody tell me that so far. Anyways, uh, I mentioned uh, just a little while back that, yeah, now, uh, you see, I was in a serious relationship, but now I'm not anymore. And I have had some people at church tell me, well, uh, th this happened for a reason. Try not to think of it as a bad thing, George. Try to think of it as a good thing. Obviously, she was not the right person, and God will give you the right person. So try to think of this as like a blessing in disguise. The good things are about to happen. You just haven't experienced them yet. You just haven't gotten there yet. You just don't know it yet. And like I say, I mean, I cannot tell the future. I do not know what's going to happen that hasn't happened yet. So yeah, that, that could very well be. I don't know if I said this uh, the last time I talked about this. Uh, about four years ago, I won a car in a car raffle at church at St. Francis of Rome in Wildemar, California. Never forget that day. And I remember what was going on in my life right before that happened. Now, I didn't know I was going to win that car. It was not fixed. I mean, I, I actually thought I was the last person on planet Earth who would win that car. I wasn't even there for the raffle because I was confident that I was not going to win. I mean, I'd enter, I, I had entered into car raffles at that church before in the past, but you know, I, I never won before. So I thought, oh yeah, yeah, right, like I'm going to win. You know, I mean, I, I show up and I watch another person win, so I'm just not going to show up. And then I got a phone call. The next morning, I remember exactly where I was and what I was doing the night of that car raffle. I remember it very distinctively. I, I was working uh, for a, I was working graveyard at the time, so I would wake up at about two or three in the afternoon. That, that's when my day started, and I had. Uh, I remember that. I was getting ready for work, and I was actually reading the daily mass readings in my room. I remember it was dark, I had a lamp on. I was reading the daily mass readings, and I was meditating on them. And while this was going on, unbeknownst to me, uh, they pulled my name out of the drum in the car raffle at church. I found out the next morning, I got a phone call. So. Let, let me talk about what was going on in my life right before that. Now, during that time, four years ago, in 2018, my uh, family and I, we were living in an apartment, and it wasn't a really nice neighborhood. I mean, you know, uh, our, our living situation was certainly different. Obviously, now I have a house, and I'm very blessed to have that. So when this happened, I remember right before I won that car, Financially, I was not doing as well as I am now, and I had a car payment at the time, and I, I was thinking to myself, oh man, I wish I did not have this car payment, because, you know, for a long time, I didn't even have a car payment, because, you know, my parents 
bought my first car and I had it for 14 and a half years. So this, this other car that I had at the time, different car, I was making payments on that. And I, I was practically spending like half of the money I earned every month. I would have loved to have saved that myself, but I couldn't. I had a car payment. I had no choice. So when I had this car payment, I kept feeling sorry for myself, thinking, you know, woe is me. Why did this happen? You know, I wish I didn't have this car payment. It's just making my life so difficult. I would love to have a house, but it looks like I'm never going to have one because of this. And this car payment's going to be, you know, six years and I'm barely, you know, into it one year. I was working a lot of overtime just to try to make that happen. And uh, I, I remember I, I was I kept having conversations with my best friend who I still is still a part of my life now, my best friend uh, Jim, and I kept having conversations with him, saying, you know, I feel so I feel like I'm in such a bad situation. You know, I feel like you know I I wish I could have a house. I wish I didn't have this car payment. I wish I had a better job and I was making a much better living than I was. Here's the good part. Then. After several weeks of feeling that way, feeling sorry for myself, hating my situation at the time, things got better within time. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Now, if anybody here knows how to foretell the future, uh, please don't tell me. <laughs> You'll probably freak me out or maybe other people in the group. Okay, I'm... I'm I mean that in a nice way. I mean, no disrespect. I mean, I'm kidding. It's good sarcastic humor. Anyways, then all of a sudden, after feeling that way about my life for a while, I eventually won a car, a brand new car, much nicer car than the one I had. So what I ended up doing once I won this car, uh, shortly after that happened, I sold the car that I had that I was making payments on. And eventually got rid of it so i didn't have a car payment anymore done gone clean and i remember my best friend said to me and uh, some other wonderful people who i know who have strong prayer lives they said george this was directly from the lord god god wanted you to win that car because he didn't want you to have a car payment now I had been praying for my situation to improve. I was not, I never prayed to win that car. I never expected in a million years that I would ever win a car. I mean, you know, this was four years ago. I was 31 at the time. And nobody in my entire family on both either side, moms or dads, had ever won a car in their lives. I'm the first. So obviously a lot of people were talking about me. And, and there are still some people who know me who... That's how they identify me. Oh, yeah, George, that's the guy who won a car a couple years ago. <laughs> I love it. That's how they identify me. That's not how I get them to identify me. They just use that because, you know, not too many people know people who have won cars. So, anyways, after I won that car, I got rid of that car payment. And I wasn't even expecting that to happen when it did the way it did. And then, uh, uh, shortly after I won the car... My, my family and I looked for a house. And we eventually found a house. This is where I am right now. Right here. Right here. And uh, five months after I won the car, I moved into this house. Into this beautiful house. And I, to this day, and I've been living here for a little over three years now. To this day, every single day, I have always and will always be thankful that I have this house because for such a long time I lived in some apartments in some very rough neighborhoods and, uh, you know, I didn't particularly like where I was living or, uh, you know, having to walk up and down stairs every time I go home, you know, I mean, it, you know, that was just the way I felt. But I love being a homeowner. I really do. This, this is a good feeling. I cherish this every single day. I'm thankful for it every single day. I have been so happy living in this beautiful house every single day. And like I said, several months before I won that car and moved into this house, I never even imagined that any of this was about to happen or would happen. 
I, I had prayed to the Lord for better things. I had. I did. And I still do. And better things eventually happen. So what I want to say, and I'll probably do a full-length broadcast on this, maybe even next week. Now, every single one of us, at least hopefully all of us who are believers, who believe in God, when we, we pray for better things to happen in our lives, and we don't always expect it. We want it to happen right now, you know? But it doesn't always work that way. But sometimes... As long as you're praying sincerely, sincerely, not selfishly, not out of greed, when you pray for things to our Lord, sincerely, and you do all you can to be faithful to God and please God and follow the commandments and do what he wants and try to do your very best, God will reward you and will bless you in ways abundantly beyond your imagination. And that's exactly what happened to me. So, like I say, if any of you watching this right now are in a rut, in a rotten mood, in a negative situation, a sad situation, and you feel like there's no way out and you want to get out, well, pray to the Lord God Almighty and be sincere about it and be faithful about it. Even if some, some of you watching me, hearing me say this right now, even if you're not a believer, okay. You, you, uh, even if you're not a believer, I really hope that in some way you will feel differently hearing me say this. Try to be open-minded, okay? Try to be open-minded. Don't forget also about the rest of God's family, the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, all the angels and saints. Remember them too, not just God. And know this, good things are just around the corner. Wonderful blessings, positive situations, overwhelmingly amounts of positive energy can be just right around the corner where you least expect it. When If you're in a bad situation and you think to yourself, oh man, I wish I could be like George and be in a good situation. You know, I don't see my life getting any better. Well, tomorrow or even next month or even a few weeks down the road, you can be where I was four years ago when I, I didn't think my life would get any better, but it did. Oh boy, it did. And this, if this can happen to a guy like me, and this can happen to each and every one of you. I guarantee it. And I, I want to... Now, please, listen carefully here. If any of you ever experience anything like this, please, let me know right here. Okay? Let me know right here. Hey, George, remember the time you were talking about how good things can happen when we least expect it? Well, I was in a bad situation like you, and I didn't think it would get any better, but it got better. Let me know. And please, this is something I really want you to share with everybody. Please, don't just share it with me in private. Do it if you like, but everybody needs to hear stories like this. Because like I say, there's, there's a lot of unhappy people out there in the world. So, you know, some may be wealthy, some may not be, some may be in a rough situation and they're not very happy and they're not very nice to the people around them. And it's because they haven't experienced enough things like this overwhelmingly amounts of positive energy, good situations, blessings in disguise, and once they happen in your life, oh, dear, oh, wow. I, I swear, if more people experience things like this and felt the way that I do now, boy, just imagine how much positive energy we would have in this world, overwhelmingly amounts. Wow, you know, that's awesome. I think this is the longest time I've ever had a broadcast over 40 minutes now. Well, I'm not trying to do that on purpose, but like I say, I have a lot of wonderful stuff here to talk about, and I hope that you feel that way too. So right before I sign off, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been here with me, whether you've been here with me from the beginning or you've just been with me uh, several months or recently. Thank you for being here, for being members of Catholic Positive Energy I really, really appreciate it. I truly care about each and every one of you, and I would love to meet each and every one of you. I live in Southern California, so if any of you who regularly watch my broadcast are ever in California, feel free to let me know, and hopefully uh, we, we can uh, meet up uh, and, and we can talk more about positive energy. So thank you. Uh, and I'm glad that now I've had over 100 broadcasts here, and it's not just because of me. I'm a small part of it. 
This is also because of each and every one of you. I, I, I'm never going to just give myself the credit. I don't do that. I also give all of you the credit. Because if it were not for all of you, I wouldn't have no reason or purpose to do what I'm doing here. Because I'm not doing this to talk to myself for myself. No, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm doing this for you, not just for me. So, you know, when, whenever I talk here and whenever I talk about how happy I am, it's also because of all of you. Because like I say, my life is not perfect. I don't want you to think that my life is totally perfect and that I'm the most positive guy out here because I have Catholic positive energy here. No. I go through rough times as well. I've been there. Oh, boy, have I been there. Trust me, that's something I know a lot about, and I wish that were not the case, but it is. And it's because of people like me who have had a rough past who can also help you have a positive future. So thank you. God bless you. I'll have a topic for next week, and I think I already know what I'm going to talk about as I already touched on it. So until next week, and please remember, dignification is better than criticism.